Hey, what's up guys? Taylor here with Defenders and Disciples. And today I'm gonna to be giving you three reasons why you need to stop buying guns and gear. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button below to show your support for the channel and also to keep you notified of future videos. All right, so without any further delay, let's go ahead and talk about those three reasons why you need to stop buying guns and gear. But first, I'm gonna clean up some of this stuff. Time and time again, I see people rushing to purchase that new gun or new piece of gear that's gonna fit perfectly in their preparedness plan. I also have people ask me sometimes, what do you think about this gun? What do you think about this new gun? What do you think about this? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't really follow guns that much. I just know how to shoot guns pretty well. Yeah, it's a pretty cool sidearm you got there. What, what is it? I don't know what it's called. I just know the sound it makes. And then you also have people panic purchasing and fear that some politician is going to ban a certain type of gun. Hell yes, we're gonna take your AR-15. I'm not gonna lie, I've been there. Purchasing that gun that I just am convinced it's gonna fit that perfect niche that I have for a self-defense gun or a survival gun. And once you purchase it, you get it, and you're like, okay, what now? Here's what usually happens. A couple weeks go by, maybe a few months, and that gun no longer has that new gun smell and you're on to the next thing. You may even be willing to trade that gun in for that next gun. It's this never ending cycle where you get the next gun and then you get the next gun and you keep going and keep going and keep going. And I'm telling you, the grass is never greener on the other side. There will always be one that looks more appealing just because that's how we are as humans. This repetitive buying and selling process and searching for new guns and looking for that unicorn gun, whatever it is the case may be, the one that you think is gonna fit that need, it's a trap. It's a trap. And it's a lie. Take the gun you have and train with that gun. Learn how to use that gun well. Take courses with that gun. Practice with that gun. Dry fire with that gun. Shoot that gun over and over and over and over and be proficient with that gun. This brings us to the three reasons of why I think you should stop buying guns and stop buying gear. The first reason is you can only carry one to two guns on you at a time, maybe three, depending on the size of the gun. But generally speaking, most people carry one gun on them. Let's say you have some zombie apocalypse scenario. You're probably going to carry a rifle and a handgun on you. The second reason is every gun that you add to your collection is going to require a certain amount of supporting equipment to go along with it. If it's a handgun, it's gonna require a holster. It's gonna require a light, possibly. It may require an optic, magazines. If it's a rifle, same thing. Optic, a light, backup sights, a sling. The price of the gun is not really the price that you're paying. You're paying the price of the gun plus the price of the supporting equipment. And sometimes the supporting equipment can be more expensive than the gun. Or you fall into the trap of, always partially building guns. So maybe you buy a bunch of ARs and you don't ever complete them. You could have had maybe two that are completely built out, but instead you have seven or 10 that are partially built. Whenever you buy these guns, there's gonna be an additional gear tax associated with those guns. Not only that, but it takes a lot of time and energy and obviously expenses to research and purchase that gear. And this brings us to our third reason. All that time you spent on researching and purchasing guns and the supporting equipment to go with those guns could have been spent on education and training. As I mentioned previously, you can only carry one to two guns on you at a time, but there's really no limit to the amount of training you can carry with you. Me personally, I would rather be someone with one gun and 100 courses than someone with 100 guns and one course. Okay, so what do I mean by education and training? Well, for starters, watching gun YouTubers run and gun with super sexy cinematic editing, that's not education or training, that's just entertainment. When discerning between education and training and entertainment, understand that education and training edifies the viewer or the student, and then entertainment emphasizes the actor. Sometimes it's a mix of both. Sometimes you can have entertainment with education, but just understand what you're getting when you're watching those videos. The most training that your average gun owner receives is probably some sort of hunter education class or state mandated CCW, concealed carry course. People that attend those courses, usually that's the, the most advanced and the last course they will ever attend. So I encourage you to have a continual education approach to your firearms training and not just stop with those basic courses. Make no mistake, these tools are some of the most potentially powerful and dangerous things ever invented. And if you as a responsible gun owner don't seek the time to get education and training, then they may pose more of a danger than a defense to the safety of you or those around you. Not only that, but if you want your gun to be that equalizer during a fight, it behooves you to go out and seek education and training because firearm skills are not inherent, they must be learned. Hopefully now I've piqued your interest on the need to get education and training. So your next question may be, well, where do I go to get it? 
The first step I recommend for most people is to seek some sort of basic handgun course. I'd look at the NRA Basics of Pistol Shooting, which I'll link below. Even if you're a military or law enforcement veteran, I highly encourage you to take these courses because there's a pretty big difference between the way that public sector courses are taught to our military and law enforcement and the way civilian courses are taught. The thing I like to say when it comes to public sector courses, those public sector instructors, while there are many, many really good public sector instructors, their students don't determine whether or not they continue to be an instructor. Whereas on the private side, the invisible hand of the free market determines whether or not those instructors are gonna be successful. Because if the instructor sucks, then no one's gonna go back to their course. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! If you've enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, train to a higher standard.